I'm Andrew Archer, and this is On Mind. Uh, today our guest is Lindsay Archer. Uh, she is an LPCC and LADC therapist in private practice at Minnesota Mental Health Services. She supervises clinicians and students preparing for licensure with a holistic perspective. Lindsay practices movement therapy, which is an innovative way to process psychological experiences by incorporating talk therapy with bodily movement. Lindsay lives in Mankato, Minnesota with her partner, that's me, Andrew, and their three young children. Welcome to On Mind. Uh, can you start by just explaining what LPCC is and LADC? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So LPCC um, stands for Licensed Professional Clinical Counselor, and LADC stands for Licensed Alcohol and Drug Counselor. Um, essentially, mental health providers in the community need a licensure to be able to uh, practice. And there's um, a variety of different licensures you can get going through school. My background, um, my graduate degree is in clinical psychology. Right, and I think people get confused because of all the different acronyms. Uh -huh. Like, I'm a licensed independent clinical social worker, you're an LPCC, there's licensed in marriage family mm -hmm. therapy, there's of course psychiatrists, psychologists, um, but like you're saying, anybody that is independently licensed um, can practice talk therapy. Uh, it's just a matter of you know what right. the focus is. Uh, but how did you get interested in therapy and specifically movement therapy? Yeah, so um, I, as an adult, started running. I remember I would see people running down the street and think to myself, like, man, I wish I could do that. And then one day I just started slowly, you know, walk, run, walk, run. Then I just noticed how different I felt, how much better I felt every time I would go out. The fresh air, the movement, just the physical activity itself. Um, then as I'm going through, you know, graduate school and working a full-time job and doing my clinical hours and then studying and all this driving back and forth everywhere, I'm doing a lot of sitting, not a lot of right. movement. Um, and then I worked in a variety of different settings, but oftentimes doing work as a therapist, you're sitting in an office or sitting in a group or sitting in a meeting or sitting at your desk typing notes. And so there's a lot of sitting. Uh, mm -hmm. all day long mm -hmm. uh, and I think over time I noticed the toll that that was taking um, physically on me you know I'd feel more stressed I would feel tired I would feel less focused as my day went on um, and so a big part of it kind of happened for me at one of my previous jobs during lunch breaks I would start to go outside and walk you know 20-30 minutes just get some fresh air and move around a little bit and when I would come back after my lunch break, it was almost like starting my day fresh. And it made such a difference in how I felt throughout the workday, but even just going home mm -hmm. um, and leaving some of that behind. So I wanted to incorporate the movement into therapy, which is how the transition um, into private practice and movement really mm -hmm. came about for me. Yeah, and I imagine that resonates with a lot of people, therapists obviously tend to sit a lot it's it's couches you know recliners that kind of thing the average person in the u.s is sitting between 12 and 15 hours mm -hmm. a day if you commute you know that's adding an hour or two to the perhaps office job where you're sitting and of course we're not meant to be idle or active <clears throat> creatures i mean we know we know what happens to zoo animals when they sit when they're enclosed and sit is they they basically go crazy they lose that um kind of drives so can you can you talk about you know why it's important to focus on the body in therapy uh western culture it tends to be this big split mind over here body over here but they're they're not really um demarcated in a specific way mm -hmm. yeah so aside from just what I talked about how it makes you feel in general I mean most people can understand when you move when you exercise you're physically active it makes a big difference um, in our mood um, also just how we physically feel going about our day getting our tasks done there's the health benefits that come from movement so that was a big um, piece of it for me but then also incorporating that into learning to control what's happening. So whether we're talking about trauma, um, stress, just uh, anxiety, depression, these different um, things that you might think of when you think like mental health or you know emotional well-being, um, it's more than just 
our mind that's affected by these things. And oftentimes, um, so let's use stress, for example, when we feel stressed, not only maybe is our mind racing or just completely shut off for some people, um, if we can slow down and pay attention to what's happening in the body, we can recognize mm-hmm. how much the stress physically impacts us. You know, my heart races or I get sweaty or my shoulders are tense and I realize, you know, when I finally lay down at night to go to sleep, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh gosh, I have to like, like fight or flight. Let right. it go, right. So part of the incorporating the body into it, um, a light, so I teach meditation. So along with the meditation, the movement piece of it is you're paying attention to what happens in your body. So I take the kind of traditional talk therapy um, and I incorporate the movement along with it. So we're talking while we're walking, running, stretching, doing yoga, whatever it might be. And we're being mindful about it. So we're paying attention to what do I feel now? What do I notice as I'm paying attention to my breath and my feet are hitting the ground? And maybe when I talk about something that's um, more emotionally heightened, Um, I can notice what happens for me as I'm moving while I'm talking Mm -hmm. about it versus maybe historically if I'm sitting in a chair or sitting in my room, you know, I maybe I feel all of those feelings and I don't know what to do with it and it can feel um, can feel really overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And so you're learning that you can control what those feelings are or you can't control the feelings, but you can control how you're reacting when those feelings are coming Exactly. Yeah. yeah, being more mindful in, in making this mind-body connection mm-hmm. that you're talking about. So can you speak a little bit more to how movement therapy is different from other traditional talk therapies and maybe what a, what a session would look like? Yeah. So oftentimes, um, traditional talk therapy, so you go into someone's office or you're in maybe more intensive... Um, residential unit uh, type situation where you're you can um, feel maybe more uh, what's the word you used earlier with the sitting just feeling idle yes sedentary Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we're just sitting yeah so when what I do is I take people out of that setting Um, so we're using the process of therapy which all of us who are licensed individuals have been trained in but I'm taking that oftentimes um, outside with people so it's not only that we're moving but we're in nature right so we're paying attention to what's happening to our body but you're also using like this dual awareness so you have to pay attention to uh, how you're feeling maybe the breathing what's happening for you but also your surroundings so what's happening in my environment um, and where we're located I'll often take people down to the river trail um, yeah. so we're outside we're by water um, and there's just kind of a calmness that comes from being by the water um, yeah, and so it's like it's very natural, mm-hmm. right? In terms of how humans lived, have yeah. lived historically, yes, not in offices, right, for twelve hours a day, right? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yes. Um, and so then we get outside, we start moving, and oftentimes I'll check in with people. Okay, so we're talking about this. How are you feeling now? What are you noticing now? And then as we kind of close that um, discussion or that processing of whatever it is, we move on to the next thing. What do you notice now? Uh How are you feeling? How are you doing with that feeling that was there before? Um, What do you want to do with that? So we're practicing those mindfulness tools as we're walking and processing um, whatever the goals are that individuals want to focus on. Right. And that that fits with this podcast is we're really trying to have a window into what it's like to be a therapy provider, but also as the patient or the client, like what they might experience working with you, working with me. Spoiler alert, we both work at Minnesota Mental Health Services that I started in, in 2017. So we're in the Hugo building, which, yeah. is, which is an old town. It's near uh, the river. And as you were talking, I was remembering uh, a session with a patient of mine. We have a therapy dog in training, mm-hmm. Dharma, that's there to offer a little more play, yeah. <laughs> a little more uh, excitement, maybe stress uh, at times. But so uh, a patient was working through yeah. a traumatic experience that they had had as a young child. And I kind of spontaneously, after we had talked about it and processed it, um, suggested that we go outside. Mm -hmm. and go for a walk to keep the energy moving that of course is stuck in their body Mm -hmm. from from the traumatic event that happened 
And that kind of just speaks to a little bit of the flexibility of our our clinic is that we do have this natural environment, the river. Uh, it's quite quiet once you get mm-hmm. get there from our yeah. place. But but so that so that patients don't, if they have that kind of caged up energy, bound energy, is yeah, we can talk about it and we can like you're describing. Okay, what is it like to feel that way in your body? Where do you feel this tension, this pressure? But an opportunity to then just move that, mm-hmm. right? Is that and then what are your patients experience once you've done that movement yeah so we're moving we're they're noticing without judgment is a key piece of it as we're doing these so you might notice like oh yeah I feel tension in my shoulders and then as we're walking and kind of moving through some things checking again oh, that feels you know I feel more relaxed or I feel whatever it may be without this is good or this is bad but also an awareness that oh, okay I can control what I do when my shoulders are really tense. I can stand up and go get a drink of water, run up and down the stairs a couple times, for example, if I'm at work. So using some of these very basic um, tools or um, you know, well, the environment. Can't they have. just look at their Apple Watch, right. their iWatch to tell them to stand right. up? You're and actually suggesting they be mindful yes. of themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll go outside with people and um, oftentimes too, there's um, something to be said. The research shows when you're walking side by side with someone in therapy versus sitting right across from somebody in therapy, People report um, that they can feel um, maybe expose themselves more in a more vulnerable way and kind of open up and express things that maybe historically has taken longer in this traditional Mm -hmm. um, office setting. Um, So people are feeling like they're expressing more and they're kind of working through things more quickly as we're moving. Mm -hmm. But I always check in with people before we leave, while we're out doing the movement, walking, running, whatever it is. And then when we get back and we walk into the building, we come up to the office, do a check in, you know, before we wrap things up and how are you doing now? And I've never once had someone say, man, I feel like, I don't know if we can swear. I feel like crap, (laughs) right? It's garbage. Yeah. Yeah. I really don't feel great anymore, but it's very much, you know, it's always like, I feel so much better. I'm glad we got outside or you know, I'm feeling more relaxed or it felt good to talk about that stuff. Um, and people can really relate to it because I think though um, some of the feedback I'll get is, oh yeah, I, I used to walk with my neighbor and we would talk about stress of what's happening at home or the kids or whatever it may be. And so they can relate to just the process of walking and mm-hmm. being active. Um, so with the practice that I'm doing, it's not only like you come you know, to the office and we go outside and we walk, we do the, the talking, the therapy, we work on the goals and then you go home and come back next week and we'll do it all over again. We will. Um, yeah. But it's something that I encourage people to be doing every day on their own. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. don't necessarily have, you know, me or your therapist there with you to talk through what's happening, yeah. but you're just incorporating these <clears throat> lifestyle habits, whether that's the walking, the running, whatever sort of exercise works best um, for you, though I will say there is um, the research behind the, the cardiovascular um, movement and getting your heart rate up. So however mm-hmm. you do that. Um, and then also the meditation. So you're taking two different ways of being mindful and paying attention to what's happening um, to your body or in your environment and staying grounded with that. But in one of them, you're being still and silent and the other one you're moving and talking. So it's using different tools to work through whatever those stressors are that you're dealing with. Yeah, and it's basically a balance between inactivity and activity that mm-hmm. you're doing in the session. So talk about the, the inactivity and you, and you train um, the patients in mindful awareness, meditation, and their experiences with that paired then with the walking, running, stretching movement. Mm-hmm. How, how do you orient people, you know, in terms of mindfulness? Sure. So um, generally one of the first things that I teach people, so if you think about, let's say I have a new person coming in that I'm going to meet with, the first session is we go through this assessment. It helps me kind of understand historically what's happening you know, for you, what's happened throughout your life, tell me your history a little bit. We get that out of the way, so now I have a better understanding of of you and what's going on. Then we start to teach the tools. So I start with meditation, generally, so we're gonna meet, you know, I have these cushions in my office, we sit down, I talk to them about 
how you sit, what it looks like, what you're going to notice, what might happen. Um, and a big part of it is just we're sitting in silence. So for some people, that can feel really uncomfortable because oftentimes now when we're silent, we have a phone we're looking at or we have right. like TV on in the background or there's just always this kind of noise that we can... Mm tune into and you're listening to yourself and what's happening yeah. in the body yes this. yeah so with meditation you're sitting you're paying attention to what's happening to me right now um but you're also paying attention to what's happening around me so you might be able to hear like my white noise machine or the traffic going by um outside so it's not that you need to necessarily shut down everything but you're just really paying attention and staying in that moment uh -huh. so you're also learning through that, if you're sitting and you're feeling um, maybe really overwhelmed and you have a lot of thoughts that are happening and historically that creates a lot of, we might call it anxiety, uh, worry, yeah. nervousness, um, people lay in bed at night and they can't fall asleep because they have all these thoughts happening. With this, we're practicing paying attention to it, but I encourage people to kind of let, let some of that go. So it's a practice. It's not necessarily an easy thing to do, but you're letting go of those mm -hmm thoughts, the judgments, and you're just being there with yourself. And you're learning that, okay, I can experience this. It will pass. You know, I'm not going to be debilitated because of it. Um, I can work through and deal with these difficult things that come up mm -hmm. um, in I think a very practical with, way. The trick with that is people identify with their thoughts. They think they are the same mm -hmm. as their thoughts. And, and what you're teaching them is to look at how they're thinking a little bit dispassionately and focus more on the body you know what's coming what are you actually feeling as you're ruminating about your boss or uh -huh. your, your partner is like it's it's actually a sensation in your body and you're trying to observe that mm -hmm. um one of the things i wonder about because you're you're advocating contemplation in an age where it's it's hyper communication and constant activity online right yeah. it's, it's all being fed to us and then responding to so it seems like people are contemplating less because like you said if you have a spare moment <laughs> bring out the the smartphone and you know we're we're living through this kind of epidemic of suicide and depression especially in these younger generations and my understanding of, of depression from transactional analysis, which is the modality I use, it's an inability for basically inside our head for the more intellectual, analytical parts, you know, that judgmental voice, mm -hmm. like, you're, like you're talking to, and the more emotional or affect, like the childlike version of us. When those two can't um, have a internal dialogue, then the piece, the person feels uh, really empty, really depressed, and it's, it's because that that analytical part can say, can identify us as, well, you're lazy, you're not working hard enough, you need to be perfect, these things. And if you don't have a, a way to counter that and understand that, oh, actually, no, that kind of inner critic is sounds more like one of my parents mm -hmm. or something, you know, therapy gets into that. I think the, the buzzword now is mindfulness. Everybody is hearing mm -hmm. about that, but all of therapy is mindful you're paying attention to how right. you behave yeah. and you think but the, but the thing that's a little bit different about minnesota mental health services is you and i are both trained and have extensive um backgrounds in meditation practice you know we used to go to those silent retreats yeah. before we had yeah. kids and we um, had time to do that and, and so we're actually teaching the patients in real time okay here's how you sit on the mm -hmm. cushion and then take that into the real world apply that yeah right yeah. And so oftentimes, you know, you had asked about what it might look like when, when I'm meeting with someone. So everyone's got goals when they come in to meet for therapy. So we'll start with the, the meditation. So we're taking, how are you feeling? We sit with what's happening. Um, notice what happened while we sat. And then, okay, what do we want to focus on today? So it's almost like you're taking a pause from whatever you walked into the session with you, know, you walk up the stairs and you're thinking about oh I'm running late I'm in a hurry or I just got into an argument with so and so or I have so many things I have to do and whatever it is so we're doing meditation and you're working on setting some of that stuff aside and just being present with mm -hmm. what you're doing here what you're doing now 
Focused on mind. Focused right, on that, mind. Not to plug the, right. the show or anything. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, so then we take that. So now we're in a space where, okay, I, I most of the individuals I, that we do this with, they'll say, yeah, I feel more calm. I'm feeling a little more relaxed now. All right, what do we want to focus on today? We'll think mm-hmm. about, you know, is it a goal you have? Is it something that's happened recently? And then we'll pay attention to how it feels to just bring it up and talk about it. And then we go outside and we do the movement that I mm-hmm. uh, just explained. Is this some kind of a trick? You get them to sort of zen out <laughs> and that makes your job easier as right. the, the session goes? No, no. But I will, uh, I was thinking earlier when you had, um, when we were talking about the movement piece of it, um, even for myself, I mean, you know, people coming to see me for therapy isn't for me, but (laughs) I will say when Mm. I have um, a day that's packed full of individuals that I'm seeing, um, when on those days when everybody is like, yeah, let's go outside, let's do this, let's move, whatever it looks like, versus it's pouring rain and people are like, I don't really want to do that today. Mm -hmm. um, It feels for myself even so much different at the end of the day, which I was kind of alluding to earlier with my lunch break walks, but it really makes a difference in my both physical and emotional Mm -hmm. well-being. And when I come home to three kids, I'm in a much different space. Yeah, so yeah. It's, a, it's actually healthy oh, to be yeah. contemplating. Um, you know, we talked about the idleness that is kind of an ende- uh, epidemic now for, for most people, but concentrated meditation practice to actually um, examine what's coming up in your mind you know that's what we promote Uh, and I don't want to speak for you but when I'm training my patients in a concentration meditation Mm -hmm. I don't say okay this is gonna make you feel better this is gonna be the the time of your life or this is gonna solve all your problems like um, you know Buddha the kind of uh, original um, person that promoted uh, this kind of uh, therapy, he said, just try it out. You mm-hmm. know, see for yourself. What yeah. do you What do you realize? And and so, what are the results? What are people saying to you that they're realizing? Oh, um, so the individuals who practice it on a regular basis and follow through with my my. I can't make anyone, you know, go home and do meditation or move. But <laughs> Nudge my, them a little bit. <clears throat> my guidance to do that, you know, they'll come in and say, okay, yes, I've been in a regular practice for a while. And um, whether that's they do this at night before they go to sleep, um, I feel more calm. I'm able to kind of sort through what happened during the day um, and then let it go and go to sleep. Or mm-hmm. for individuals who like to do it at the start of the day, they'll feel um, like, okay, I can, I'm feeling grounded, I'm feeling centered, I can move on with whatever the rest of the day, you know, has to bring me and I'm not feeling, I'm not carrying around that tension or the stress of all of the things that I have to tackle now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think the, the benefit of that knowledge is recognizing when you're getting triggered, you know, something's happening with your kids or your, your partner, and you right. feel this um, activation, how I explain it, to my patients is like okay there's a stimulus could just be in your head like this is how i want things to go or somebody you know uh calls you a name or does something derogatory you feel this um activation Mm -hmm. but we usually react just like if i have an itch on my ear and i just scratch it what we want with mindfulness practice okay here's the stimulus what are you feeling in your body recognize the thoughts that are coming in your head and then you create this window to then you respond appropriately mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to it. My Zen teacher would, when asked sort of what what is Zen, and in essence, he would say it's an appropriate response. So how do you make sure you have an appropriate response in a situation? Well, you gotta be clear headed. <laughs> you have yeah. to know what's good, not just your head, but what's coming up in your body so you don't just react. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. In teaching people too, I think both of these practices, the the meditation and the movement, especially, it's teaching people to take care of themselves, just to have healthy lifestyle habits, mm-hmm. um, which can really help with how we deal with, like you're saying, how we deal with the stress of somebody coming up and you know yelling at us or uh, the kids screaming when you walk in the house or whatever it is. Give me, give me, give me. <laughs> yeah, it can really make a difference in how, like the next steps, what happens when that happens to me? How do I choose to deal with this and approach to meet it. Uh, yep. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now if, if people are interested in seeking out your services, our uh, website is Mankato Therapist. Mm -hmm. They can look at your profile and just kind of yep. walk me through what they, the steps would be and how that would work. Yeah. So if you um, go to our website, you can um, look at my profile. We have a tab. If you read through it and you decide, yep, this is the person I want to meet with, um, you can just uh, request a free consultation. Um, gives people a chance to come into the office, um, just get a feel for the space where we're located, meet me, um, kind of get an idea if you think it's going to be a good fit for you. Um, and then at that point, we talk about what next steps would look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's something I do as well, is offering this free consultation, because inevitably what people say when they end up at our office, walk in our doors, is that it's very zen-like, mm -hmm. it's very relaxed, it's not a real busy clinic, it's it's very quiet outside mm -hmm. of if the dog is there sometimes. Uh, she's uh, making more noise, but so they come in, they meet with either you and I for 20 or 30 minutes. It's not an actual therapy meeting. We just right. sit down, it's kind of meet and greet um, with the therapist. And I just go over my program. Here's what, like you yeah. said, the first meeting's an hour long assessment. You come in, we ask you a bunch of questions, write everything down. The, the other piece that's a little bit different in terms of both of our approaches that I'd be curious what, you, what your thoughts are is in virtually every setting you seek out, mm -hmm. mental health or drug and alcohol services, the provider is going to uh, come to a diagnostic conclusion mm -hmm. and they're going to use the psychiatric you know, literature textbooks on the specific disorders like ADHD, depression, and uh, we really don't emphasize that, mm -hmm. but, but, but talk about how you, you know, understand your clients from a more holistic perspective and, and what your diagnostic process is. Yeah, um, so as you were saying, we don't really use the diagnosis a lot. I mean, I think it can be helpful when communicating like with other professionals or in our consultations where we have to talk about what's happening. Um, but for the individuals, the way I kind of explain that process is I'm just wanting to know, to get to know you and to understand your history. And I'm more focused on what's bringing you in, what's creating this stress or these feelings that you're having. And let's focus on those and let's talk about and work through, um, whatever those are and some tools um, to get you through that. And for me, when I say tools, a large part of it is we're doing these activities, the the movement and the meditation that are really great, um, like lifestyle habits that you can take with you and you can have. Um, so the emphasis is building this program for them to take care of themselves and be healthy, less focused on, okay, you have this disorder, we right. gotta augment yeah, yeah. you, change you, optimize you in some way. Right, yeah. And you mentioned earlier with the consult, I think an important thing to kind of emphasize is sometimes maybe um, at different agencies, you call, you get set up, but you just have like a picture or a bio maybe to read to go off of um, for meeting this therapist that you're signed up to meet with. And I think um, with the consult, it gives them an opportunity to meet to meet myself or to meet you and to kind of get a feel for is this somebody that I think I can you know connect with and have that rapport relationship with that I'm going to be able to talk about some of these mm -hmm. you know maybe more difficult or vulnerable parts of my life yeah and especially for people that are new to therapy they don't know mm -hmm. what to expect uh, frequently people will come in and say, I don't want meds, I don't want medication. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not a physician, I'm not an MD, a psychiatrist. We don't prescribe um, medication, so you don't have to worry about that. You know, therapy and psychiatry are um, quite a bit different now. They haven't yeah. always been. And speaking, that's something too that I've noticed when people do come in, it's like specifically why they've come to meet with us at our practice is they're interested in doing, for one thing, something different than maybe they've tried before, but they'll specifically say, I don't want medication. I'm not interested in that. And they kind of get the, you know, the idea obviously from our website and reading it that what we're doing, the approaches we're using can offer some of those. We talk about like improving our mood or decreasing some of that anxiety. Those are natural, um, natural, um, 
or movement is a natural way to alleviate some of those right. symptoms Which for having medications. Hundreds of thousands of years, we've been right. <laughs> moving and not yeah. uh, sitting in in one place, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I had a thought in there that I was going to say. And then I, a lot, oh, with the medication piece, um, you know, I do, I hear that um, as well. I don't want meds. I don't want meds. Um, in rare cases, I'll, I'll refer people to a mm -hmm. psychiatrist or mm -hmm. a medical doctor, especially if there's more kind of medical stuff um, yeah. coming up. But uh, I think problematically, mental health is a lot of times therapists are becoming this pipeline to uh, medication for people. And it's like, okay, you have this diagnosis, major depression, so I have to send you over to the MD, the psychiatrist to get medication. And for me, it's like, well, if I can't, help you with this thing you're you know that's causing suffering or problems in your relationships um then that's a problem i shouldn't be working with you uh and so i my emphasis is okay i'm going to use what i know and my skills to uh, facilitate you getting well and and medications aren't that it's not that we don't let people go see a psychiatrist oh, yeah, yeah. Or, or or are judgmental about that it's just that Human beings are self-regulating mm -hmm. social um, animals, and and there's so much in the culture about self-regulation and meditation comes into play with this. But what you're describing, and I think what we're both promoting, is this kind of naturalness mm -hmm. that we that we meaning our bodies are self-regulating. So if you if you don't have this bound up stress, if if you're not sitting at a desk all day, like if you incorporate movement and you're more mindful. Of that like you don't need these other external things that are that are you know pretty quick acting if you get on an antidepressant or sure, yeah. anti-anxiety it's like we're kind of promoting a longer term mm -hmm. process right and that's what you're helping your clients build in terms of a treatment plan. yes yes and like you said I mean we're not saying people are coming in and we're saying go get meds or no don't get meds or whatever. it's I mean I leave that up to the individuals I'm working with whether or not they decide yeah they want to go that route um but most often people i think come to our office because they don't want that and they hear this is a more natural way to approach the things that i'm dealing with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i think you share kind of the the systems perspective uh especially working with kids but even in adulthood is like you know we we developed we grew up in a family system mm -hmm. where we played a role uh, but we identify with that role then through our lifetime. So when it comes to, you know, symptoms and medication, it's just really ultimately focusing on the individual. But mm -hmm. we have all these relationships that we're embedded in. So I really try and look at, well, what is actually going on with you mm -hmm. and other people in your life? And if you can create more intimacy in those relationships, you're just going to feel better. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, great. This has been a wonderful conversation <laughs> getting to know you. I feel you. like we hardly ever see each other. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much. Uh, this has been On Mind with Andrew Archer. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.